<laughs> we, we can't do the play. It's, it's, a, it's a decision. It's a <laughs> Good evening, folks. So, uh, sorry for the late start. Uh, we do not have a quorum tonight, um, but we are going to go ahead. Uh, there's uh, six of us here this evening. A quorum would be uh, seven for the Master Plan Update Steering Committee. So there will be no deliberations tonight, but uh, at the least we're going to try and exchange some information, and then certainly uh, part of that information exchange will be for uh, folks at home and in the audience uh, to glean, and then certainly ask any questions that uh, we can answer in a non-deliberative way, but at least uh, information passing. So with that, Mike, would you lead us to the Pledge of Allegiance? Pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. With summer vacations and the like, and summer work for some people too, is the reason that we're a little short-handed this evening. Um, so we will skip approving minutes. Um, public input. Roland, Bob, would you like to say anything? All right. What we are going to do is we do have a couple presentations, and these will be informative, so they are going to be useful. Uh, and most likely we weren't going to take action on them tonight anyway, other than to listen to some of the work that's been done. Uh, and we're going to start with, shortly with our RFP, RFQ subcommittee, and they'll give us an update. Uh, then Mike Zeldin has looked at... Uh, an, organize, an organizational theme of sorts, or an organize, organizing theme, and he's going to talk to us, give us some thoughts there. Rich Crowley's going to talk to us a little bit about uh, the schedule and um, how that's been modified a little bit based on lessons learned as we've been going through this. Um, we're going to continue talking about outreach, uh, and then uh, we'll adjourn. So with that, uh, I'd like to turn it over to the RFQ committee. How do you guys want to... Uh, he's the chairman, Mr. Oh, okay. Well, in that case, um, we have two, two subjects that matter here. Okay. We have a schedule, and we have um, an update on the RFQ development itself. Um, so let me let the RFQ first, please. RFQ development? Yes. Oh, uh, Paul, could you take us? Uh, <laughs> 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 you, you have All the right. floor. Well, our, our subcommittee is uh, with Rich, Mike, myself, and, uh, and uh, Myron. We've met twice. Uh, we went through, you, you know, after deliberating a little bit, we, we decided on using a model, a uh, recent model from Tewksbury from their town center operation as just the boilerplate to pare it down. Um, Myron's already done a good job of, of cutting that down with some input from Bonnie yet, or that's coming? Not yet. Okay, on the public bid process, uh, You'll be getting um, Assistant uh, Town Administrator, Finance Director Bonnie uh, Holston's uh, input as well. We had a, a, a brainstorming session the first uh, session. We uh, reacted to uh, Myron's excellent efforts of incorporating our comments into the um, into the RFP draft that we're working on the second meeting, and I'd say we're, we're pretty close. We worked on trying to include topics that have come up in discussions here in terms of wanting to have, uh, you know, making it clear that we're looking for a new plan, not an updated plan, uh, you know, striving for innovation, looking for the, you know, the applicants to, um, you know, approve both their uh, past performance and to give details about how they hope to conduct the process. And, and you know, we're not presenting it with a draft yet tonight, but I would think probably by the next meeting we would be able to look at a draft. We're not too far away. It's it, it probably smaller than some of the other ones we looked at. We decided a lot of that language was, um, you know, other than the stuff that's uh, required by, you know, statute or, or uh, 32B process um, that we, we really want the um, to make short concise messages about that we want the applicants to do their own homework at, at this point. Um, so I don't know if Mike or Rich want to add anything, but I, as I say, the next time around you should have a draft in front of you of what we're proposing with open ears to any suggested changes. Yeah, yeah, and we've we've. Um uh, taken a look at other drafts, other mm -hmm. other RFQs, yes. and uh, and probably pulled the best we could out of those that apply to this town, in this situation, and um, and I think we're we're actually taking a innovative direction so that we can explore greater uh, um, uh, larger uh, a larger area. Uh, 
What's the word I'm looking for? Be beyond the core elements of the spoken to in statute. I know we've got language in there that well, that, that uh, well I'm just reading it off the uh, off the, you know, the draft we've got here. Um, you know there there are what is it seven or eight uh, topic areas that Correct. are yeah. uh, mandated, and we obviously are going to cover those, but. You know, as we discussed when the folks were here from uh, Groton, Boxborough, and uh, Harvard, uh, sometimes ideas come up that the townspeople want uh, to address, you know, the legitimate issues, and they don't neatly fit into those categories. Every town is different. Every time is different. So uh, we want to make sure that the, the plan reflects that and isn't too boilerplate. I don't know. Is that mm -hmm. fair? Right. And then the one suggestion was to add um, governance. Right. Yep. Topic. With nothing particular in mind other than make sure we don't uh, ignore it. Yeah. Uh, and then if, if the, the, the area around the scope of services, um, what we talked about there too was making sure we were comprehensive and in including all the activities that we, uh, you know, that, that we were expecting of them so we don't put ourselves in a position of later on asking somebody to do some work that wasn't in there so that they, you know, produce a change order. That's where the rubber meets the road. That's right. So, yeah. so those are kind of the two tacks. We're working out the uh, language under current goals and status, I guess it is. We, we pretty much settled on the project background stuff and the scope of services. Um, that, that's where we're looking to get Bonnie's input primarily. Well, th from there on, pretty much. Yeah. Right, from there on. Um, yeah. You know, a lot of it will be standard. Um, one of the <laughs> points for your next subcommittee meeting is just to um, pick what the minimum standards are for the consultant. Right. Okay. So we still get some work to do, but we'll get a draft to you soon. Yeah, and it, and, uh, and that's a perfect segue into schedule. No, we're not there yet. We're not there. We're not segueing yet. Um, it's on the agenda, Rich. <laughs> Oops. Let's get there. Tewksbury. Can we get the Tewksbury plan uploaded, please? Yeah. Unless I'm missing it. They don't see it on our RFP examples uh, on the website. There it is, no? Yeah. To use it, that's fine. It's yeah. just if we get it uploaded. Since we're discussing it now, yeah. and then uh, all committee members can have an opportunity to see yeah. it and you know, kind of get in training, your training right. board as to you know, why you thought it was a good idea to use it. And that's more to form better. than content. It's, it's yeah. form. Yeah. Yeah. I'm with you. No, it's form. Yeah. 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 Files. Well, we got it somewhere because we got it. Mm -hmm. Right, <laughs> yeah. I have it in my files. So okay. Can, 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 it be, can it be posted? Is it, is it okay to post it on the website? Sure. Mm -hmm. well, that's what, yeah. that's what he wants to do. Yeah, yeah, okay, good. Yeah. Okay. Let's see, we got all the other examples. Yeah, yeah that's what I thought. I thought, yeah. All right. All right, so that's. So, everybody's. Any questions of our subcommittee folks? And I, I think my only question would be is if there was a part of any particular RFP or RFQ that you'd like, just let us know. Right. Good point. That's a question for the world. Yeah. How do we want, you know, surely to the committee it's easy enough. You know, just one of your emails asking that. Um, we still have all the committees. I want to think about you getting that out to the public, how we can best advertise that. To get those inputs, that, you know, uh, maybe that gem we're just missing. That um, somebody out there who's in the business of writing RFPs, RFQs themselves, they may just come and have you thought of. There you go. Nope, had not. Um, so thoughts? Yeah, you know, maybe just drop Marin a note. And yeah, think through this. That may be a good way to expand how we're getting the word out to folks. I was going to suggest. Purchase a couple of sandwich boards. Put one at the common and one one down by the the trains, not the train station. The um, transfer. Uh, depot. Transfer. Depot. Depot. Okay. Um, and with a notice that the um, you know that the, we're meeting on such and such a night. Uh, come and voice your opinion for the future a little. Some right, yeah. something interest something catchy like that. All right. We don't even have to buy them, do we? Because we already have them in inventory in the town. Mm -hmm. You know, just because people look at those when they're going by the common. I do. What would your catchphrase be? Um, 
Well, we'll have to we'll back with this again. refreshments provided based on the input yeah. we got. <laughs> There's the water. <laughs> well, no, we were told it worked. Seriously, yeah. we, we could we could do that. Sure. And I, I think when we get to the point of having the public meetings and the forums yeah. or the workshops yeah. or you know whatever several means that we're going to go through to do that, that would certainly be one of the methods. That's the method. One of the methods Boxborough found to be yeah. Most that's like the lady was saying uh, the other night. Mm -hmm. Yeah, from Boxborough. Right. And and I think you're right. If it's out there every night. The I, I know Roland and hosting the pursuit of excellence meetings always made sure we had snacks and drinks there in the in the room. Isn't that right? Mm -hmm. I said when you we, you were chairing the uh, pursuit of excellence meetings, you always made sure there was uh, food and drink in the room, non-alcoholic. I should stipulate. Yeah. Yeah. So my two cents. I'm gonna drop in a hint here, right? We need snacks. All right. Anything else on the RPR for tonight, tonight folks? All right. Oh, we're, meet, we're meeting again next Monday, by the way. It's yeah, here, please. 1 o'clock, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, the subcommittee. Subcommittee. Yes. To right. talk about the RFQ. And the public is welcome. It'll be a yeah, there's a supposed, supposed to be meeting. meeting. Yep. Yeah. Mike, your organizing theme thoughts. All right. Well, prompted by the remarks made by our esteemed chairman and input from my colleagues who were very easy to work with, lots of to it back and forth and listening to what's going on as far as I can do it around the neighborhoods. Uh, it seemed to me, and after reading a lot of the uh, RFPs and also talking to the folks who are at the other end of them, namely the citizens in various towns, hardly consensus. It seemed to me that given Littleton's situation, it was important for us to have a focus, an organizing theme, something that reflected, something that touched on what is a central component of Littleton going forward for the next, shall we say, 10 to 15 years. And for reasons I'll be happy to elaborate on at a future time, um, it was my view that economics, and I mean the two branches of economics, made the most sense. And uh, the two branches of economics are the ones we're most familiar with. It's called the efficiency side, which has to do with how much something costs. Does it have to do with materials? And the second one is a more recent development within economics in the last 15 years. And it's a softer, it's sociological. It has to do with something called fulfillment and quality of life. And the advantage of focusing on these is that it has both a, a very strong qualitative as well as a quantitative side that allows us to not only monitor and assess the performance of the consultant, but also monitor our results for those policies that are implemented and give some guideposts. Now, my real reason for proposing a organizing theme, especially this one, was to elicit from, our, from the public and from the committee, first of all, their views about an organizing principle. I just felt, I'll just repeat again, I felt that the other plans, the other master plans, including our own, whatever their merits may be, they quickly lost focus. They quit quickly, as it were, dissipated in terms of theme. They were not anticipatory, and I, have to, I mean that. They did, they did not fit the, shall we say, the shifting sands of time and circumstance. And so I was looking for a theme that uh, is a, provides a framework uh, that allows the shifting sands of time and circumstance to be addressed not only through the planning but also in the future. Now, this is a theme. The first question is, do we want an organizing theme? Does it have value? What's its deficiencies? Number two, if we have, should we have one or more than one and why? And I'll just leave it at that. But it, I would just say that I'll repeat again, my concern here is not whether or not it's economics or anything else. I am concerned about which one, but that's not the issue. The issue is it's, I'm looking for Littleton to come up with a plan that the public has a way of seeing in a very concrete term its impact on them in the near term and the far term. And I'm trying to also look for a way to involve them, even if it's somewhat quote, provocative, unquote. So I'm going to stop right there and hopefully elicit remarks, comments, suggestions. Um, 
Yeah, a couple of thoughts from my side. So I like the idea of having a theme, whether it's more, one or more than one. But you know, whenever I embark on a project at work, we have a theme. We need to go deliver X, and everything rolls up under that. So it's really clear we're all on the same page. So I like this conceptually. I also like economic development. Um, I think that's great. What I don't know, this is what I was trying to think about, is does everything truly fit under that theme? Like, let's take an example, like um, cultural resources, for example. How does, how might we fold that under an economic development theme? You, 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 am I permitted to respond? Oh, <laughs> no, no, because I don't want to, this is ridiculous silly. Okay, here's, no, no, seriously. Who started this? You're going to have to answer. <laughs> I, I don't mind doing this. It's just, it's just, it's just silly. Okay. All right. Uh, it turns out that uh, it, you hit the one that really reverberates for modern economics, and that is the the impact of cultural, shall we say, cultural components of the community. And you can put in religion, art, music, the whole nine yards. Uh, they have become more measurable in terms of their, frankly, their impact on the economy of a town. In fact, many towns revive themselves, if I kind of use that term, by building their, their rebuilding or reimagining their town around art and music, not I around hard business. Okay, now, how to do it is a different issue. Yeah, but I see where you're headed. But, but the impact here is, okay, I mean, directly, if you have enough critical mass of any of these, it turns out, it's just like any other field, the next thing you know is you have restaurants, support things, people around it, it's how you manage it, and frankly, there's a risk involved which ones are going to be most successful. Mm -hmm. But it's very clear that cultural components can be assessed through the economic, the broad economic lens. So just don't, don't think about this as in, uh, inflow and outflow. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Hi. We have, we have Indian Hill, and we also have um, the ski area in, in Kimball Farms. That's uh, physical activity and, and cultural activity. We don't have either the ski area or, or Kimball Farms. Well, nearby, <laughs> nearby. Yeah, right. But within... Um, okay, I, I, I don't know what... Uh, let me give you scale issues here, and then I'll just... We have the tube park. Right? All right. Well, All right. You, 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 mentioned in, you mentioned Indian Hill, and it's a very good example of a, a place to start. I have no idea if the community at large would be interested in it. Um, I don't know how much Littleton reveres Indian Hill. Uh, if you look at the Indian Hill facility as it exists today, you have to raise the question, is it, quote, I don't mean to be cruel, large enough? Are they, are they going to become, as it were, uh, I don't mean to be, you know, uh, Tanglewood East. I mean, that's sort of ex exaggerating it somewhat. Uh, wolf Trap, you know, of Massachusetts. Um, I have no idea what their plans are. Uh, if there's any contact between Indian Hill, the, the trustees, and the town, um, this would be a mechanism to, to use to approach them, let's put it that way. Mm -hmm. However, I'd also like to point out that in addition to music, there is also a fair, fair amount of concern inside the core city. I'm interested in recruiting, <laughs> frankly. There's an interest in um, art and music inside the core city, and a lot of the practitioners as well as the folks who enjoy it are finding it increasingly expensive and inefficient to do it there. So uh, without going into the expertise required and all the rest, I mean, but don't eliminate the, what we'll call the visual arts uh, along, with, along with music. Okay, how about open space? That one is even easier. <laughs> well, yeah, I'll okay. Um, at, at the risk of sounding flippant, and please, you know, calm me down on this, Paul. You, you generally bring the hammer down. I tend on him to bring the hammer down on me. <laughs> Am uh, I letting you get too far out on the limb, Mike? No, no. no. Uh, let me go out on the limb, no, then right. really yeah. cut it off so I can crash. <laughs> okay. All right. With with open space, there is. In fact, I would like to have the public engaged in this very, very directly. There are, there are a lot of numbers floating around. I heard a few in, in passing about how it costs money for housing. And, and basically, the, the folks who feel this way become, basically, they claim to be open space, but I'm never quite sure whether they want open space or just don't want houses. Mm -hmm. it's, a, right. it's a real issue, yeah. all right? And they also it brings into the issue of con conservation. 
And it turns out that conservation has really changed between the late part of the 20th century and where we are now. And my favorite place, I'm not suggesting we should duplicate it, but uh, if you, I think you've been, you've been everywhere, Paul, so you've been to the Netherlands, right? I have. All right, you have. Right. If you go along the coastline where they have built the dikes and you just go a little bit, not very far inland, you will find the result of an interesting collaboration between business, government, and local government in which they have done what I would call modern conservation and curation where you have gardens that operate, if not all year round, in different forms and functions, uh, but they also become cultural centers in and of themselves. So I'm hoping that we could start thinking about use of land, open and otherwise, in something other than the what we'll call traditional ways, which are not necessarily the most efficient. And like modern farming techniques, if you go out to California or go to places where they do farming on a serious basis, or Nebraska if they're still doing it there, um, and you try to move that and you look at what we're doing here, you can see right away in, in Littleton, however, it's, 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 it looks good, it looks like craft, it looks like we're doing something, but it turns out for the rest of the open land that we have here, it's not really being curated in a way that will draw visitors here, mm -hmm. that will be an attractant. Okay, clearly Mike has thought very hard about this. I'm, I'm, I like the idea. He sold me. I, not, I'm more, more interested in... Oh, sorry. Oh, no, 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 I'm, 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 I'm trying to sell you. I'm hoping that you would say terrible, or I've got another no, one, or a third one, or a fourth one. Now you're going to get what you asked for. What? Now you're going to get what you asked for. All right, come on. <laughs> Here you go. Mr. Chairman, please. No, please. But, yeah, all right. But that's soft, soft. soft. Come yeah. on, say soft. No, no, it's just uh, three reactions, and, and we, we discussed this at yes, the, uh, yes, yes. At the uh, subcommittee meeting, too. Um, first of all, on, on the, uh, the primacy or the, the prioritization we ought to, pay to the piece of the puzzle that is economic, I agree with. I've advocated that over and over again, and I support the uh, effort you're making to inject that into all the parts of the conversation, because I think that's what is underappreciated and under, um, you know, underlying a lot of issues is that there's an economic piece to, no matter what the conversation is, you can't do what you want culturally if you don't have the economic research, you can't provide the services you have. Um, you know, if you want to have control over your land use, you have to be proactive there, and which involves being proactive about your economic uh, growth, all of those things. So I, I, you know, I'm an advocate for doing all that kind of, or seeing that kind of interrelation. Uh, the idea of an organizing principle, um, taking aside the particular topic that you chose, the uh, economic piece, I think that's a place that I would rather see us end up with the uh, plan, final plan, than something we start with. I would agree with the criticism that came up earlier that our, our plan uh, in place doesn't uh, seem to um, give much evidence of, a, of an overarching uh, um, um, organizing principle. And that's a weakness of it. It's a lot of stray ideas tied together under, under the, you know, the usual topic areas. So I don't mind the idea of at the end of the day when we've gathered the input, had our discussions, heard alternatives, had our debates, ending up at a place where our document has an organizing principle. And I certainly wouldn't oppose that, uh, you know, from my own uh, biases, that the economic piece be, you know, primary there. But I... If you start there, then, as evidenced, I think, just by the conversation that you and um, <laughs> Melissa had, we run the risk of um, having somebody here, okay, economic development or economic, the economic pieces are going to be our organizing principle. Well, what about this? What about that? And all of a sudden, we're in an argument as to whether or not those two things have merit against each other when the real point ought to be making the connections between them rather than presenting it in, in the form. So it's, it's more in terms of a, my concern is, is do we get off on the wrong foot by sending the message that we've already decided what's going to be, you know, our outcome uh, as opposed to, you know, we're soliciting input and we have our own opinions, we'll inject them along the way. We may well want to drive it in a direction where we end up with one organizing principle, but we don't want to, we don't want to, uh, I don't think we want to s stop input or send the wrong message. And I, I think we run the risk of doing that if we adopt a 
organizing principle at the beginning as opposed to being open to the idea of an organizing principle along the way. So, long so left well, I disagree with that. Point. Okay. We're end up someplace and we've got to find a plate way to get at it. So his suggestions about you know, the, the economics, the, the Netherlands, is, it's not the same as here, and, and your suggestions, and, and all the way down the line. We still have to look at some place. I like your umbrella. I don't know if you use the word umbrella. Is a... Um, we have to get someplace, and all these things have to come underneath. So that's why I've, I pictured an umbrella, not a beach umbrella. It might be a beach to start out, but eventually it's just going to be a one-person umbrella that we need the town to fit underneath and what we want. What, and again, not us, we, the town. And Paul's directions, your directions, it's got to lead underneath that umbrella and be done with it. You know, we need to really solidify where who we want to be. There's a, I'm sorry, there's a fundamental assumption, uh, Peter, you, you landed on something fairly important from my particular point of view, and that is um, there is the, there is the notion that somehow or other that there is something out there called the town vision, okay? And I don't mean it from a planning point of view, Marin, okay? <laughs> not doing envisioning here, okay? Um, I'm not sure that for a population greater than maybe 50 or something that brings people together like a religious belief or a political group or something of this sort. Uh, I don't believe such a vision really exists. I think that people carry in their mind a picture and that's what they think the town is, should be like or is like. And I think our job in Littleton, or especially in Littleton, is not so much to come up with a vision or a picture, uh, but more the opportunity to make choices that we all make so that at, that we all participate in living here. In other words, we're all part of, I don't mean to sound like a slogan, but in the end and in the beginning, it's the town is what it is because of what we have here and who put it here and who's putting it here. Yeah. So it, the diversity is so great that my idea or Melissa's idea and even Paul's idea of a bucolic oh. town. <laughs> Okay, I mean, I would, you know, if we start sketching it out, I would hate to look at the drawing of what it looked like. But, um, so what I'm, what I'm really trying to do is break away from this notion that we've got a, a vision. I think that we are more interested in quality of life, and we're interested in making sure the town can do more than survive, that it can have choices. And when I think about our discussions about acquiring or not acquiring land, or buying anything, or doing anything in town, uh, where are the resources coming from? It's like a, for me, it's like a primary threat and a primary opportunity. Sure, building a new firehouse. And, uh, you know, do we need it? What's the payoff? You know, does it really, do we need it to enhance our quality of life? Uh, I would like to, I'm, I'm very wary that the term economics, anything involving a heavy duty, involving the kind of abstraction that sometimes is associated with economics will just scare the public away. I, 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 I am concerned about that, so I'm looking for help here. <laughs> that has to be one of the, the premier subjects: is the economics of the town. Well, his, you know, so without it, we, yeah, but my word as of late, perish. Yeah, roll it off. <laughs> I, I had a I had a really cool saying the other day: um, uh, a, um, a process through which everything flows. So everything flows through. How? What were the words you used? A theme, uh, and I'm it must not have been very good if you forgot it. So yeah. <laughs> it's regrettable. Yeah. So, so, so it's a, basically a blind squirrel finds a, a nut once in a while. Basically, a theme that uh, every everything flows through, or is like a septic system. Under <laughs> under it's pretty close, <laughs> pretty close. Um, in that case, we we, is an we might start out with, with um, one or more themes, yeah. and then right. and then come to bring school. them together. Well, the good old days. I'm trying to pick up again on, on several themes here, but it sounds to me like perhaps the quality of life under and economics and a bunch of other things fit into that. But I want to be very careful that we're not a committee or that a steering committee starts telling the public what that quality of life is. No, I think that's the key, Mike, is, is not the, the underlying message you're trying to promote here or even the notion that we should be... Um, trying to derive a, uh, an organizing theme. I think it's more in how we inject that, present it, 
yeah. be, be mindful of the subtleties of it because it's how people react to it that you know we will live and die by. And we, at the end of the day, we want to be successful and we want to include their input. But that we don't being lose another twenty years, right? Well, yeah. yep. I'm somebody that's lived in town, uh, you know, I've been in town all my life. I look now at the way the town is going, and it's becoming very unfriendly. I mean, we have to jump through hoops to get something done. People want to bring in businesses. You can't bring in a business. We, we make bylaws to block businesses coming in, like your big box stores. Well, maybe not everybody wants big box stores, so we come up with that, with a bylaw for that. But I think that we've got to work more with the people in order to get things done to, to make the town gel. I mean, we have a group here that doesn't want property. We have a group that, that wants open space. You know, it's it's just like the town is not friendly to everybody. It's it, we're we're fighting people. You know, that we want to build houses. People want to move out this way. And if you look at the town, well, we don't want houses. So you know, we're, we're telling people we don't want them to move to town because we don't want to build any more houses. So I think the town has become, in, in part of your theme, we've got to become a more friendly town. Well, that's a good, good point. Yeah. And, and you're right, housing is a piece of that, a big piece of that. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and to go along with the housing is we have to have more, um, we, we've got to have the services that we can provide to people like you know, maybe the shuttle to, to the common for the people live on the outskirts or, or we've got to be, have an area in town where we can walk to to do shopping and stuff like that. I see the people walking from, from on site up, and, you know, arms full of bags. There's, there's, no, there's no service with them to get back and forth. So it goes back to we got we got to become more friendly. Mm. Yeah. you Gives them recreation. <laughs> <laughs> They could stop at the basketball court on the way up, get a game in. <laughs> you, you, your remarks bring to mind that, that one of the other models, that the, models, the other way of looking at a town, <clears throat> if you take seriously the commuting, that people in Littleton do it. I don't, I don't have the numbers. I think one of the towns that did a plan has the numbers. Of, they actually counted the number of folks who work outside of the town. <clears throat> I don't know where Littleton would come out, but it would strike me as it would be surprising if more than 50 per it would not be surprising to me if more than 60 percent of the folks in Littleton worked elsewhere. So I think it, it may be a little bit higher than that. Okay. Yeah. So if you think of ourselves as a kind of island <laughs> and we have to bring certain resources in, what makes us attractive? And when I started just at the very beginning looking at eco the economic efforts made in on islands, admittedly for tourists, it turns out without the infrastructure that you're alluding to and the cooperation and friendliness of the locals, there is no tourist business for them. So things like cross buses that take everybody from shopping to the center of town, for example, or more importantly, the transportation, the equivalent to the wharf, okay? Uh, those kind of things make a big difference because that's where people gather. Um, I don't know how friendly the transfer station is this year, but let's put it that way, that a lot of stuff goes on that galvanizes the town around the dump, okay? So yeah, why not? Everything revolves around the dollar, too. I mean, yeah, yeah it's true. It cost? What's the, the economics of the town in order to, to bring these things forward? Now you're, now you're after solutions, and, 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 and I, I don't think we're here tonight to do solutions. I'm looking for yes, framework. It's later on the schedule. Yeah. We've spoken often as to it's not going to be the steering committee's plan, it's not going to be the poor selectman plan, planning board plan, et cetera. It's going to be the people of the town plan. Um, so having an organizing um, theme, does it counter that? Now, conversely, you know, Otherwise, without some sort of organizational principle, we're wandering lost in the desert. If we're going to start using island metaphors, how about a desert metaphor? Good. I'll go for desert. Okay. okay. I've been lost in the desert once or twice. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a pleasant feeling. Mm -hmm. um, couldn't see the water? Couldn't see the water at all. I didn't like the land. I'm not seeing land. <laughs> it was just sand. Uh, and you're hoping the helicopter comes back for you. <laughs> but um, an organizing principle, Maybe rather than a theme. Sure, sure, sure. That's playing with words. 
some sort of organizational structure so that when we do release an RFP um, contained therein, whoever responds to it has an idea as to how to shape things. Um, because putting out the RFP that has a scope of service and things, you know, okay, give us a, a master plan. And a master plan that includes a housing plan, an you know, economic development plan, on and on and on. Got it. That's the easy part. Um, what specific, and I won't use the word unique, but certainly what's specific to the needs, wants, desires of Littletonians that we inject into the uh, RFP so that these businesses, the vendors, look at that and go, I've got an idea which direction and how to go with this. So to say economics in your definition of the two different ones uh, certainly is very useful. Um, because you know, certainly the study of economics, you know, macro, microeconomics, mm -hmm. get that, you know, we know the supply and demand curve, where they cross the equilibrium. Um, we all get that piece. Um, your questions about cultural and then open space and your ability to um, speak to those is quite useful. Um, and you could say, and you use the term, it all comes back to the dollar, and there's, a, there's fairness in that comment. Um, but I, I don't know that it's wholly accurate because some folks are willing to sacrifice some dollars for fulfillment. So if, you know, if we go back to uh, remember sociology, Maslow, you know, and the five levels and uh, self-actualization right at the top of the uh, pyramid there, the triangle. I'd stay awake. You know, you can really think about that. So he's in the um, desert too. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> came to me. Oh, oh, wow. Was the bush burning too? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, oh, man. Yeah. Oh, man. Oh, man. I mean, I haven't heard that for years. Okay, okay, okay. Back to the subject again. I'm sorry? It's what your budget can afford. True, but some people are willing to not even do that. They may well have the dollar, but they'll choose not to buy it. Um, maybe someone will buy a hot rod automobile. You know, and 10 miles to the gallon, but someone's going to buy a very fuel efficient car, and either one could have bought either one, but their own particular uh, needs, wants, desires really fall into that. Not circumstances, because both could have afforded either one and done either one, but through personal choices uh, made those decisions. And that somebody could buy the, um, the large limousine, but what do I need? A, I need a car to get from here to here, and my little Fiat gets me from here to here. I don't need a large limousine. Could afford it, but chose not to do that. So we're all going to be in positions to make a choice, and we do it every single day. We make choices, and it's all priorities. And that's like you know, somebody may say, "I don't have time to do that." I say, "Well, actually, you do. You've just chosen to do this instead, which is fine. You've prioritized this over that." And the same thing how we may spend our money. Someone buys a you know a big you know a pickup truck, you know a 3500 model instead of the 1500 model. Oh, uh, why? Because I can't. Um, no, because I pull big things with it. <laughs> and some people, it's, it's for that purpose. It's a very utilitarian purpose. It's aimed right at me. Aimed right at you, sis. Directly. Perfectly at all. And sometimes it's very utilitarian, and you've done it because of that. And others, I just like it. So they chose to spend their money that way. Um, but sometimes, as, as, as a resident, and depends on who shows up at town meeting, we all, unfortunately, we don't all get to choose where our money gets spent. It's like in the big government, you know, you got to send it in, they spend it where they want. If people don't show up and people don't participate, you're stuck with what you got, correct? Mm -hmm. And <clears throat> some of our town meetings, it's really funny how they go. Some days they're packed. That's true. And as soon as it, that one subject goes by, that's important. <laughs> yes, that's correct. So in this instance, us sitting here, we don't even have seven people to show up on a regular basis, twice now or something. I was told that last meeting I missed was not on the agenda. So that's the only reason why I missed my one meeting. <coughs> but but discuss what your point is there. But no, that was giving him a rasp. Oh, he told okay. me there was no meeting and there was. So that's, but again, to show up and participate is important. You know, we, you've, this is your second meeting, is, is that correct? No, it's third. No, more than that. More than that. But let's, really? let's bring it back oh, though, to the organizing theme, yeah. um, principle, whatever. We should be able to define something that we're trying to help the town in a direction. Uh, the specific direction, um, you know, we're off by a matter of degrees. If we're sitting here and we're 180 degrees off, wow, something's very, very wrong. Um, I would offer that. And 
different folks gonna have different ideas. Just Peter said, what are our you know person's particular priorities? Some of you say, you know, you're 90 degrees off the way I want to go. Some of you say, it's just 10 degrees off the direction I want to go. We're not going to meet everybody's thing. You know, a bit about friendliness and stuff. Um, your experience here is extraordinarily different than my experience here. You grew up here. Um, 60 years ago, it was a very different town. When I go back to the town that I grew up in, it's very, very different also. And there's that old saying, you know, you can't go back home. The thing is, you never left home. So you've seen <laughs> oh, shit. That's, by the way, that's another novel. So now we're, we, we now know his education in the desert keeps growing here. Okay. Um, now, I've lived in... That's hypoxia. I've lived in various different sorts of communities. Uh, in the Phoenix area, where houses are eight foot on property line, and there's not a fence between them. There's cinder block walls that are six feet tall. So everybody's in their little cube, okay? But one of the great things about being here is we don't have cinder block walls. You know, we don't have chain link fences here. So that's, you know, that's a personal thing for me. Um, I've lived in gated communities. Some people call them Air Force bases. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, so that, and then I've lived in hamlets, uh, small little towns. You know, we talk about cluster zoning and having you know, a little uh, retail area and immediately surrounding homes and tightly packed homes at that. I've lived in those sorts of communities also, overseas, uh, in Europe, uh, never here in the United States in that sort of community. Um, but then, you know, from being across the entire United States, lived in different locations, seen different things. So I would offer, um, you've seen those changes here. It was a much more homesy, I'm going to speculate if I may, and correct me if I'm off base here, much more homesy as you were growing up. And now, okay, I move in, Mike uh -huh. moves in. Folks that you don't know, so the intimacy you have with people you've grown up your whole life, we don't share that intimacy. Well, I moved I in 40 years ago. I'll become a newcomer soon. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, since I think we're friendly and friends yeah, on them, yeah. but still there's a level of intimacy, and I can see that. So when I'm in a gathering with folks who are townies and you grew up together, I can understand there's a bond there. Um, but it's more than that. It's, it's yeah. what you, someone from out of town, what they bring to us. When growing up here, again, your neighbor was doing something, you over and helped him. You know, I had neighbors move in, went over and introduced myself. This one guy, I bet you don't speak to him once every five years, you know, and that was to you know, get him unstuck one time. But it, it's, it's sometimes the people that come in are, are, are taking the town away from its friendly atmosphere. Some of them aren't as friendly as... I would offer you had a some, person or two like that 60 years ago also, who the rest of the town just didn't interact. Uh, again, wild speculation on my part. But given the nature of people, I'm not saying they're all like that. And no, no, I know that. And, and it's just the ones that come from like Arizona. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you admit, our, our memories are tricky things too. You know, uh, boy, re retired Sergeant Bob Romley's a hell of a lot more calm than Sergeant Bob Romley was. <laughs> Do you think everybody who encountered on the side of the road would would remember how friendly you were, Bob? <laughs> But, you know, I, I, not so much the people in the town, it's what we do to businesses, um, you know, trying to get things through to, to build something. Yeah. It's like you've got to jump through hoops to get it done. I think it's become a little easier in the last 10 years, though, or the last five or six years. I think it's become Since a... you've been on the board. <laughs> well, I, I didn't say that. Is that how long I've been on the board? Well, expedited permitting specific to this uh, example you're giving. Is, is definitely, it's a step in the right direction. Does, doesn't mean there aren't cases that are maddeningly frustrating, like the poor folks at, uh, at the, the, the rest Act 3 trying to get, you know, get what they used to have, you know, a full liquor license. Okay, back to the organized principle. I think a fair discussion, because again, it gets more known more about each other and helps us with the, each other's thoughts. Um, the economic theme, I see the u utility in it and the way you've described it. Paul had a good point. There's a risk of misinterpretation, and I would say there's a strong risk. Now, no risk, no reward, so uh, I, this is not a risk-averse statement. Mm -hmm. It's just a risk mitigation statement now is where I'm going with this. Uh, and how do we want to address that? Is it a risk that's worth taking? Do we see enough reward in this? No one, right up front, forecasting easily, someone will misunderstand it. And we will backtrack and take some time to explain uh, our rationale. We may articulate it well and be successful in communicating it. 
anticipate we will fail again in, in some subset of that. Um, so I, I, I'm willing to take the risk personally. Um, now, we need to craft it to, uh, well to try to uh, minimize that risk of misinterpretation. Where we are right now, we're not there yet. Um, that's going to take more work, Mike. Okay. <laughs> the dilemma. Right. B before I embark on this uh -huh. endless trek <laughs> <laughs> across the Arctic, well, if it still, unless it melts. Um, does anyone here having, I mean, this is a knee jerk response I'm looking for. Is there, Paul made, Paul made, uh, I think, an important contribution to the discussion from my point of view, and that is for a change. Anyway, th the idea is that he, he wants to use an organizing principle, whatever it is, let's say it's economics, at the end of the planning process. You made the point we need something that pulls, begins pulling the public and our thinking together from the very beginning. And so my task is either to turn this into something that can be used at both ends. Now, the, the, at the end, it's very easy. It's the beginning part. In other words, the parts that you are after. That's the hard part. I have no problem working on that and trying to get it done. But what I am looking forward f from you is, does anyone here in a knee-jerk response have another organizing principle, or two, or three? I don't really, you know, the, the task would, it may be easier <laughs> and more profitable Okay. I, might, I might play around with the wording, but I, your basic underlying point, I think that's the, the, the key thing. No matter what your vision is, no matter what you like, somewhere on the subsurface there is the economic health and the sustainability of the town plays okay. a role there. I mean, I'm, right. I'm, I'm right. The, the, only, the term that I think about that applies to the town is not just the transactional, what we'll call classic economics. It's the fulfillment part. That's the culture, that's the fulfillment, that's the emotional, that's the part where you, you take in what we'll call the irrationality of the marketplace, if you want to get technical about it, mm -hmm. all right? It's the place where most people live their daily lives at that, in that place. And, and getting that down in a, in a form that is going to be, um, to resonate. I mean, having to do with friendliness, with sense of community, what will do it. Uh, looking for for input for how do we move people from one side of the town to the other from the depot not all that kind of stuff actually is fulfillment <laughs> that's not transactional economics Paul I think made, made the landed on that so I'll, I don't have any problems working on it at all um, but if any of you <clears throat> any of the rest of the group comes in with something that can disrupt this I'm open to it this is not a closed door by any stretch of the imagination. Initially, Paul, I, I took you maybe a bit reticent to it. Who do you think now? Oh, I, I just think it's uh, it's, it's a place we could uh, be more um, inclined to arrive at as we as things reveal themselves to us through the process, as opposed to being something we start with. But you know, as you say, risk reward. Um, I, th I do think we have to be careful as to how we pause it. If we're going to invite people in for their input, and we're going to tell them, here's our organizing principle we need to explain, you know, this is a straw man, this is where we're starting from, but, you know, we, it can change along the way based on input, based on what we learn, based on debates we have, whatever. Um, but if there's value, you know, if there's commonly agreed value in starting with a focal point, I, I can be open to that. I think we just have to be careful how we do it. I think you, you hit it there, because it does provide a, provide a point of departure. And even if we miss the mark, uh, so we release the RFP, and we get a vendor, and we pick a vendor, and we're happy with it, and they've begun down that road, there is cost corrections available to us. Um, so I would ask, and you, you put it in the terms of beginning or ending, yeah. I would ask that we, we put it in the beginning. Okay. And and everybody think this through a little bit. Maybe give Mike some, you know, thoughts as we go through the next week or two to help him here. Because, and you know, I'm kind of teasing you a little bit by pointing yeah. to you. Uh, but you've come up with a good idea. And, you know, the, no good idea goes unpunished, right? Mm -hmm. So. Well, especially if you shoot it down and you come up with something even better. Then it, that's, that's the reward yeah. of the good idea. But you, I think you're on the right track, and we need to help you, too. Um, 
the word economics because you know, we talk about economic development and that that's it's it. even one of the pillars yeah. of the entire plan so yeah. folks can get you know, narrowly focused on that you know, and just reiterate we need to be careful there uh, on how we present that so let's go forward with that if everybody's okay for the moment at least mm -hmm. all right what's the word I'm looking for sociological is that well, it's socioeconomic, if that's what you're thinking. We've, we've got some of that language in that draft language in the RFP already, so that'll, that'll come back. I forget how we ended up on the language on that, but it's in there, right? Yeah. Okay. All right, Rich, you want to talk to us a little bit about schedule? Okay. Um, thank you all, by the way. Appreciate oh, it you. very much. We, thank you. We're, we're on track in terms of drafting the RFQ. Okay. Looks like we'll, we'll bring it um, here, sip. August 25th, we'll bring it here on September 8th, and uh, we'll, we'll finally re, uh, approve it on September 22nd and send it off to town council. From there, it goes to... Let me to stop you there for me. So your, your thoughts at this point, and we won't make a decision on this, yeah. but let's just no, see that we all understand what you're thinking here. Uh, and I'm reading it, so the committee would, at that point on September 22nd, that meeting, and you know, we're happy with it, and then we get it off to town council prior to releasing. Is it worthwhile having it run by town council before then? Well, we're still we're drafting it on the 25th, yeah. which we bring it before you guys um, for the first few. We talk about it. You send you send us back to fix it, yeah. and we come back on September 8th. So it's not worth going to town council until after we get a final. I hear what you're saying, um, but then it would have to come back to us if town council found some uh, errors. Oh. So what I'm thinking is, based on you town, guys help me. Well, based on town council reviewing most of it, the, the main body of it right now, because uh -huh. they've got it. No, we'll send it to them once. We're gonna send it to Bonnie initially, right? Yeah, yeah. and then because yeah. she's the um, uh, chairman officer, right? Yeah, and we can we could send it off when we're at when we're at our our semifinal draft. All right. Well, you, there's no. Um, there's no float in the schedule for if on September 22nd this whole committee says it looks good to us, goes off to town council, the town council says you made an error, it needs to be reviewed again. Right, there is no float in this. So that's the point I'm trying to make here, is town council is not the approval authority. And the way the schedule is designed right now, he's the approval authority because this committee would say, yes, it looks good, goes off to town council. And I think some of this might depend on how it's received um, in two weeks. Uh, We've done a good job so far with yeah. the social services and everything. Um, that might well dictate where we end up with. You know, if, if you're ready on the 22nd, I'm going to be gone for the meeting on the 8th and the 22nd. So maybe we could invite council into our meeting on, say, the 8th or whatever. So, so you know, he, he could he could hear it as it's being debated and, and get us off any wrong track we're on. I'm yeah. just trying to stay on schedule, and then you know. Um, we'll take do that, yeah. And then you know he sees what we're talking about, trying to do, and if he has to go out and play around with language rather than just handing him documents, you know. Have we'll given you all your experience. Any deviations at the noise level, I should think. Hmm? Uh, given all your experience in doing these, I, I can only think it'd be at the noise level. I can't see something all well, that substantively wrong. No. The town yeah. council would go, yeah. "You missed the boat here." Yeah. Um, and the way I well, would we rather have them just look at the entire thing in one shot and be done with it then instead of interjecting each time as we go? I mean, that way, I, I kind of liked Richie's first statement. We look at this, we come in front of us. On the 8th, he gives this. On the 22nd, we give it to him. He looks at it and says, all right, these are the three issues. It comes back to us, and we address those three issues only instead of... So this is that this gets to support that. What do we have to, what are we in, in such a hurry? I mean, what, what does... What does one extra meeting change to, to get it right? See, this. I guess I'm not articulating it well enough. I guess not. I have no problem in another meeting after town council sees it. And uh, I have no problem personally at changing these dates. All I'm saying is the schedule as we look at it today does not have that built into it. No, it doesn't. So that step needs to be built in. Can That's do. what I'm saying. We can do that. And I'm guessing, well, let's see, August, on the September 8th, I'm going to guess you guys are going to be pretty far along on that. We, what we, should be, we should be. We oh, should yeah. be. Done. Sure. And yeah. getting the draft to, yeah. to Bonnie and Marin and um, Tom Harrington by that point? By the 22nd is when that goes to them. I'd offer, here's what I'd offer. 
is after the 8th, we meet that meeting, and I'm betting you guys are far enough along in this that it can go to town council at that point. So we you meet one more time Fine. as a subcommittee between that and the 22nd, and on the 22nd, this committee now has, you are content yeah. with it, town council's content with it, and boom, now the committee yeah. approves it. I think I, yeah, I'm, I'm all for that. I think our intent was just not to overuse right. town council when we didn't need to. I don't think you overuse them by doing it that way. Yeah. No, the way you time. propose is fine. Yeah. Marin, from looking at the language so far, since you've seen a lot of these, uh, yeah. I would imagine the town council wants to take a very hard look because of the amount of money and responsibility that goes along with this. So, right, but he'll probably have standard sections he'll be able to place in. Okay, in, in, so in you don't think it's going to be like I mean, I mean, my understanding is that they're always looking for minefields that are going to explode that, we, that lay people just never see in contracts. <laughs> they would know we didn't mean that, but oh, that's what you said. Yeah, you know, know, I think count, town council probably re a reviews a half a dozen or, or ten of these a year. This is my I mean, we should. It's, it's a yeah, pretty we're, standard. We're thing. putting words in here and expectations in here that. But those are the things that he can't approve. Okay. Well, He'll approve um, content and insurances and making sure we don't have uh, uh, conflicting language. Right. So. I mean, we'd ask him to review. Yeah. Not only add the sections that he needs to have in yeah. there, but also to review all everything yeah. the committee's done just yeah. to make sure. It's not missing a step story language yeah. or anything right. like that. Yeah. Or we're committing so, a full pot that we could have paid And then we can get to Bonnie after that. And so this schedule works. Mm -hmm. Just um, on September 8th, you know, we all give a head nod. Looks good. Um, you get it to uh, Tom, get it back. You guys meet one more time before the 22nd so that. You think it's all ready for the full committee to give its final review and approval? Sure. Now you got to think. You can't just give it to us on the twenty second and expect us to vote on it. Um, you got to have a few days before that at least, so people have an opportunity to read it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So how about by the Friday before? So that would be four days earlier. Is that the eighteenth? Is that right? September eighteenth. Yeah. Should Friday. be. Yeah. So can we shoot for the September 8th thing? Would you mind adding that into the schedule? Sure, good point. Um, so September 18th, distribute to committee via email um, by, uh, you're going to be on vacation at that point? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, but town council would be able to, between town council and Bonnie. Right. Yeah. It would be good shape. By that point, hopefully we'll be on the part that you play the biggest role in and more into the... I'm very happy to pass off the electronic <laughs> version yeah. to anybody. <laughs> <laughs> Paper free. Well, you know me, Montana? Uh, yeah, well, they got internet out there, don't they? <laughs> <laughs> the I'm also in, ca in Canada. Oh, okay. They have a lot of casinos out there. Uh, wow. Yeah. Great Falls? Small ones. Hey. Ka-ching, yeah. ka-ching, ka-ching. Take your money no matter what the size. All right, all right. So here we go. Then um, continue, please. Thank you. September uh, 29th, we uh, Bonnie issues. That's a week later. Bonnie issues the R RFQ, advertised in Central Register, local new pa newspaper. Uh, a week after that, let's see. I think it's a week after that. We have a briefing session, October 6th. Let me get my calendar up. Let's just get on here. Yeah. Um, Ninth, yeah. A week after that, we have a briefing session for, this, uh, for the applicants. October 9th, which is that Friday, three days later, last day for applicant questions. So, October 13th, which is a Tuesday, we meet together, subcommittee and, well, full committee, to review the applicants' questions, draft an uh, agenda. Um, for re let's see, ad addenda, it should say, for release on that, that uh, following Friday. So if, if there is, if there is an addenda, if there are questions to, to put in an addenda, um, Friday, October 16th is when the addenda goes out. Then a week later, the following Friday, the submissions are in. So from, from issue to Receipt of RFQ, we have uh, three, just a little over three weeks. October 26th, following Monday, 
Baron picks up the packages, or whoever's here, and splits them up because each each of the proposers, say this, we have five proposers, um, each of them will, will have given us a, a package of, say, a dozen proposals. Somebody will have to split those five times 12 to packages for all of us so that we each have all five proposals. So that's, that's a time-consuming task. Um, following Tuesday, we meet and evaluate the applicants. Uh, let's see. We can decide at that point um, if, the, if we want to have a um, designer selection committee. And uh, if we do, for them to review and rank, or we could do it ourselves. We can we can do it as a committee, or decide we're going to have a subcommittee, design a selection subcommittee. When they uh, give us these packages, can they give them to us in dozen form? Yeah, each each we can ask. Um, for this, so having this, somebody this, here run off. Right. This thing, oh yeah, say yeah. They must be given in the the dozen R form. The RFQ will will ask that each applicant submit thirteen. By then, are we going to have 13 members? So probably 15 um, sets, and yeah. each of, we'll each get a hard copy. Is that out of the ordinary to no. ask for such a thing? No, it happens all the time. It, yes, for number of copies, page count. You can the administrative criteria can be added. Yeah. Um, so there we are. Uh, before you go any further, uh, as to who evaluates these, um, no decision necessary tonight. Yeah, you can't make one tonight. No, no. But give some thought as to what might be the right composition of the selection committee. You know, whether it's this whole committee, whether it's just the RFQ committee, whether it's the RFQ subcommittee with some other folks in town as part of that. Um, I would certainly lean towards the latter in all candor. So I'd ask you guys to think about that. And that uh, the latter being mean, which option? Other folks beyond our 12 yeah. be part of it. And I don't know that the whole 12 of us need to be, uh, I'm always inclined to say, towards the subcommittee with a few other key people. Um, you know, there's a manageable level. Again, mm -hmm. you guys have done this, you know, once or twice. Yeah. When when I when I do uh, when we do schools, it's uh, sometimes there's um, the whole building committee of you know a dozen people make the decision. Sometimes it's only a very small yeah. group of three people. I, I, I'd be, like to think, yeah, we, any, we could, as you say, we, we shouldn't make a decision and I can't make one anyway, but I, I, I would hope that for the purposes of everybody who's putting their time into this committee, that they have a chance to play a role in one of the most important decisions, the most important decision, that's you know hiring the, well, they, you know, they, the consultant. So. I would think that you'd, you'd almost have to because the thought process that went into um, what these guys are going to provide should be the you know is in our heads completely. We're the ones that have been attending the meetings every every week, um, and and so we we need to to in order to to pick the right um, applicant, we need to know that all those components and be able to match those components with the applicant to come up with the right applicant. What I would ask us to do though if we decide the whole committee is the right thing to go and I'm easy on that but we will have decided before we release the RFP no, the RFQ. Um, I think that's that's a fairness issue too. yeah we got to settle them up on the process before yeah. we send out the document yeah. yeah I agree with you yeah uh, this has been alluded to it I'm interested in the point of our collective individual point of view um, it is after the RFP when the, after the RFP has been released and it's been bid on and all the rest, we now have to, we are now living with a consultant on this conference, okay? This is the part that I really am most concerned about after listening to our visitors a couple of weeks ago. And I guess I'm, I'm, <clears throat> I'm trying to put the selection process more explicitly connected with the management <laughs> process. So what's the, what is the current picture we have, that's a rhetorical question perhaps, about how the consultant is going to be, quote, how the process is going to be managed? Oh, once the consultant's on board? Yes. I know you've got some thoughts on that. 
I mean, because to me, this is connected with selection. I mean, you know, I think right. all of us here have had experience with, okay, we're going to hire X, mm -hmm. and part of what goes into the process is who's X, who's she going to be working for or under or with or in spite of, <laughs> okay? And I think we got to think about the management part mm -hmm. yeah. as, and not just as a criteria, criterion, but who actually on this committee or who, this who in the town is going to be doing it. Right, and understanding that the contract is technically with the planning board. That is and exactly right. Also, it's going to be signed by town administrator, given, most likely given the dollars. I mean, I don't mean to, you know, get no, off the track, but to me, to me, discussing, you know, who is going to review the document and, you know, decide who gets picked. No, that is the next step after uh, selection as to who's managing, how is it, how is the vendor managed? Yeah, we should probably put that in the RFP. How they're going to, who are they going to report to at, at the end of the? Well, yeah, you know, it ought, ought to be much like what you said, PJ, board. about the selection part. Then this, this, the ultimate management of the that relationship yeah. ought to be spelled out, whether it's in the RFP or at least voted on by this group. Um, either way, yeah, yeah. So that right. we'll, now, we'll add that into the decision matrix here too. Let me throw another grenade into it. <laughs> okay. Well, not grenades. He's a, okay. He's a, All right. We're talking here about a very dynamic, personal, I mean, I'm, I'm coming back to your theme of friendliness here, okay? And we may find someone technically competent of lifting the rock and carrying it to the other side of the room. And however, not everybody on the committee, not everybody in town necessarily can successfully interact with the rock carrier. And we want to get the rock carried across in spite of, okay? So if someone does not approve of or is reluctant or skeptical about a particular applicant or is in, you know, should that person be on the management team, on the management well, you process? You don't get along with anybody. That's why I'm, I'm putting this out already so I don't have to worry about it. Do okay. I. I <laughs> oh, you get along much oh, better than I do. All right. The reason we have the interviews is so, is so we can, can uh, ferret out that chemistry. And um, one of the things that we, we seek in those interviews is to make sure that the guys that come in front of us are the guys that we're going to have um, service us, not, not a dog and pony show so that a salesperson comes in and then leaves and we never see him again. That happens. We want to make sure that the guys that come in are the guys that we're going to see. Okay. I'm, I'm less worried about the, how we deal with the guys who come in, the men and women who come in and do their shtick. I'm talking about the town and us. Because who manages that process and how that gets managed is not trivial. That's true. That needs to be discussed at some yes, point. Yes, that's all. I'm only yeah. trying to make sure that we Between don't. now and when we send out the RFP, we ought to resolve that question. Get it well, we can send it out. It's before we pick. Yeah, but just in case we want to put that language in there, the people might be who are considering applying might want to know, well, who am I going to be working for? The planning board, yeah. you guys, somebody else? Because that's, no. a, that's a triad. We have the town, we have us, and we have the uh, whoever we're going to have for uh, the consultant to help us through this process. And, and there's an interaction. All yeah. right, we got that one. All right, Mr. Chairman, I got, I got one other schedule item related that I'd just like to get on the radar screen. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, uh, okay, okay, Paul, okay. give me just one sec. All right. Is there, that takes us up through October 22nd, 7th. Oh. Uh, now twenty seventh, right? Now into uh, November tenth. November tenth, right. which is a little over a week later. Um, because during that um, almost ten day period, we're going to be doing reference checks, and that takes time. Okay. Um, November seventeenth, exactly one week later, uh, the committee or the design and selection committee. Score and rank, because now the reference checks are done. On the 18th, which is the very next day, we send a letter out to the three preferred candidates. Bonnie does that. The uh, let's see. On no on December 8th, which is just a little over two weeks. The reason we I'm pushing it out two weeks is because Thanksgiving comes right in the middle of that. Um, December 8th. Um, is when we do the interviews for the top three finalists. And those interviews can be 45 minutes apiece. 
Uh, this is this is what I suggest. Forty-five minutes with fifteen minutes each. We start at six. We end at uh, nine at night. Now we can stretch that out. Generally, if you go longer than forty-five minutes, you're into a dog and pony show. If you if you go forty-five minutes, it gives enough for uh, twenty minutes worth of uh, presentation by them and twenty minutes worth of questions. We don't know. Uh, have good answers at, at the end of 20 minutes, then um, it gets long. The um, let's see, the 15th or the 22nd. Uh, can, can, excuse me. Can I ask a question? I December. want to back up. Uh, we're going to be seeing material, written material, from the applicants, interested parties before this. Is that correct? Or no? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. There so the in the real world, some written material is far more attractive, intriguing, and interesting, whether we hire the person or not, uh, than others, right? Can I say that again? I'm sorry. I was, I'm suggesting that not all applicants are created equal at 45 minutes. That's all I'm saying. And some may be worth talking to more, not because we're necessarily interested in hiring them. They may have a particular expertise that helps us making our decision without real you learn a lot from the applicants call them back second not necessarily call back it's just someone might submit a very good piece on something that hits malicious uh, hits right. the committee let me ask this what the procurement rules say the law and the message in the comment yeah office. Right, thank you as far as we can't if you post the time can you extend one, it yeah. you can't say 10 minutes with one and 10 hours with another i right. have to be equal yeah. Yeah. that's all the same right yeah yeah has to be yeah. equal yeah. Time necessary for the. If, if we get twelve responses, you might think it, find it necessary. <laughs> hopeful, or whatever word I'm trying to come. Yeah. You might want to meet with six candidates. Exactly. Three, yeah. 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 That piece, yes, but I think to Mike's point, you know, whether or not someone seems like extraordinarily talented at the forty-fourth minute, say, I'd like to listen to you for another hour. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the procurement rules are going to say we have to be okay. Equal all right. So everybody. I want to know. Okay. Time necessary to make an informed decision on their application. I'm worried about you now. I'm worried about ending something after five minutes. <laughs> well, we, we will be meeting a whole group of new new people that hopefully we can call and ask a question about later. You okay. Know, okay. All right. Results. No, we'll we'll have reference checks too. Right. And it's not their best. It's the last few okay. in that order, so we get good with the bad. But now, if there's some information, some knowledge base that we don't get with somebody else, we said, oh, well, if we have a question about this, mm -hmm. you know, we'll mm -hmm. think about calling them. Good. You should do that under the rules. Okay. All right. Now, because of the late hour at 9 p.m., I, I generally don't recommend making a decision on December 8th, on that night. We recommend either the 15th or the 22nd as our decision-making night that's December 15th which is the following week yeah. or the 22nd which is the week after that um, and then then we get Christmas um, so depending on who we select as a finalist Bonnie sends out a letter uh, to begin negotiations yeah. um, we continue to negotiate. Hopefully, we'll finish that December 29th. The uh, the contract is reviewed by town council on say the 30th through the first 10 days of January. Then our committee meets again on Tuesday, January 12th, and we vote. If all goes well. Uh, for the preferred candidate, we vote to recommend approval by the planning board for the preferred candidate. Okay, then it goes off to the planning board. Uh, planning board just happens to be meeting the following Thursday, the two days later, on the 14th. Um, then there's an alternate date here if there's an issue with the town council. So on January 14th, the planning board meets and reviews and makes its recommendation for the preferred candidate uh, to um, to have the uh, town of Littleton issue a contract with the same and depending on um, whether or not the selectmen have to approve that as well um, 
we either send it off to the selectmen or to uh, to Bonnie and town council to to issue the contract. I'm saying it's only PB needs to do it, right? Only the planning board needs to approve. Yeah. Yeah, generally. Is this planning board funds? Yeah. Yeah. Um, all very good. Thanks. A couple suggestions to throw in there is at appropriate times, and we, we don't need to decide it tonight. A um, update to the planning board and to the board of selectmen. Perfect. And consider we even advertising a public hearing. I'm not sure that I'm thinking out loud. Forget I was thinking, or at least trying to think for the moment. Sorry. Um, but certainly, the, yeah, I think the planning board and the board of selectmen at least one, if not two, updates. And then and I would certainly, as a selectman myself, when we meet with the planning board, when this committee meets with the planning board, say, and give that presentation is that the Board of Selectmen will have been invited to that, too. That's a good idea, yeah. Um, Paul, FinCom participation, mm -hmm. some way, shape, or form. What are your thoughts? Uh, we, I mentioned before we have a lighter schedule in the summer. We're meeting next week, and it is on our agenda for uh, Finance Committee that I'll give an update as to what our activity has been. Okay. Beyond that, you know, I'm not sure what you want, and, I'm, and I'll, I'll invite if they want a bigger participation, but I think they're content right now. That I'd say offer it. Yeah. And then um, you all, can, as a FinCom, can decide if you need more than that. And certainly, always welcome mm -hmm. of FinCom for this. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Paul, you had an input? Yeah, it, it's a calendar issue, although I recognize that the, the you know, calendar Rich drafted which is, was pretty specific to the RFP in the selection process, but in terms of other topics we might be doing as a committee, um, I think it would be a great time right now, before we get too much farther down the road, for each of us to get a hard copy of our existing master plan and spend a meeting or two going through it section by section, get it you know a week or two in advance so we can have time to go through and use a highlighter and decide what we do and don't like about it structurally, about the actual language, and we can take a look at you know what we thought we were going to do versus what we ended up doing to what extent it lacks a organizing principle and you know and how you know it, the whole the whole exercise uh, I think we shouldn't get too far down the road before we do that and I I I'd love to participate in it also I, I don't think I'm going to be here on the 25th so I hope we don't start it that night but maybe for the first couple of meetings in September uh, or whenever you think it's appropriate Mr. Chairman but no um our next meeting is kind of full with Northeastern, right? How long is that supposed to go? When you say the 25th, Northeastern's coming on the 25th, right? Yeah, and and from what I understand, that her purpose is to make a presentation about the kind of stuff that they do, which shouldn't take more than say 30 minutes, if right. that much. And then question. And answer. mainly, it's going to be us asking questions and seeing if there's anything of interest there to us, right. other than stimulate it. Why don't we think about the starting the following meeting then? So in September, as you suggest, um, can I ask you to organize it? In other words, how you structure how you'd like to go through it. Now you said section by section; that's easy enough to say. But yeah, you know, maybe uh, we don't go one, two, three, four. Maybe it's one, four, six, two. You know, I'll, I'll makes talk sense. with Byron maybe, and we can talk about okay. how best to go over that. All right. Anything else on the schedule, then, folks? All right, outreach. Let's just continue it, please. I, I have one super quick thing. Yes, there. please. Um, I'm ready to go with the Facebook page, so I'd like to you guys to get your hands on it and look at it, mm -hmm. you know, before we actually launch it to the public. So can I maybe send the link to through please. Lauren to you guys mm -hmm. and yeah. we can awesome. So okay. Do you have to be on Facebook? Nope. Oh, Made right. it public, so yeah. you know, okay. set. Right. Now you won't be able to manage the page, but awesome. you'll still be able to see it. So but I think you're fine with that probably. So I I'm listen, I'm Dark ages with some things. <laughs> and, no, and no bullying. Give me a break. No right. bullying. <laughs> yeah. okay, I've I made it so you can't comment. See, as we've spoken, <laughs> it's one way to as, we, as we've spoken through the evening, our next steps, we've been laying them out, so no further thing there, unless anybody has anything. We don't need to adjourn because we never convene. So. <laughs> We're done. Thanks, Thank folks. You. Thank you very much. Same, same time, same place, two weeks. <laughs>